you know, they're, they're going to be feeling pretty, uh, pretty cocky, um, and, and, and confident, I should say, moving, moving forward in, in, in whatever the rest, you know, uh, their agenda will be. But, uh, tomorrow, uh, will be, uh, and, and, you know, I'm saying tomorrow is if nothing else can happen tonight, but you never know. We wake up tomorrow and it could be, you know, a totally different picture. You know, more people could be on, <laughs> could have come forward or, or whatever it would happen. It would just be interesting to see what happens. And you talk about Senator Collins and the other women on the, uh, on the uh, committee, the other Republican uh, women senators, you know, will they be women first or will they be Republicans first? Uh, and what will they, what will they side how will they side when they listen? You know, when they listen to to Doctor Ford, will they be looking at her as a as a uh, as a fellow sister woman, or will they be looking at her as someone who's thwarting an agenda? Um, and I and I think Collins will be able to do that because she's you know she's kind of been able to to show that uh, you know Flake, of course, is no problem. He's a a male, but I'm talking about the women. The women in particular. If Democrats vote in lockstep with each other and vote no, it'll only take two Republicans right. to, that vote no to end this uh, this particular uh, nomination. And, right, and we keep talking about the same thing. We talk about Flake, we talk about Collins, but there are about 10 other um, uh, Republicans who, who have been really quiet, um, who, who haven't said anything. <laughs> You know, not, not not a whole lot one way or the other. Like Kennedy, I listen to Kennedy. He talks a little bit, but he looks like he's open to from Louisiana, no less. Uh, he's he looking like you know. I want to hear what she has to say, and I mean, it's probably it's may not be probable, but it is. It does seem that it's within the realm of possibility. Um, and with if, if you saw uh, the president, no, I can't say that. If you saw Donald Trump, <laughs> if you saw his uh press conference or uh tonight um he didn't he didn't toss Kavanaugh under the bus but he did put him on the bus stop right exactly <laughs> he did put him out there on the curve um uh but then the question becomes you know if not Kavanaugh then who cuz i don't think they have a i don't think they have a short list and and is you know is is this person going to be worse than Kavanaugh. Exactly. Um, and will they then ram that through? Uh, because I think the whole thing is, is, is their attempt to, to make sure they get it done before the, before November, before these elections come up. Um, it's it's going to be interesting and frightening all at the same time. Well, all right. Thursday will be an interesting day. Not only will the president meet with the deputy attorney, attorney general to discuss his future, but the testimony of the year will occur in front of the D- judicial committee. How will it go? Nobody knows. When we come back, let's talk about the future. What's next? Who's next? How long will this movement last? Of course, we'll give it to you straight. No chaser. We'll be right back. You're listening to Straight No Chaser, the only show to quench your talk radio thirst. Anyone else? My name is David, and in eight years, I'll be an alcoholic. I do. I'll start drinking in middle school. Just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school. And by then, I'll already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking. Who's next? Before they start drinking. I just remembered it's election day. Are you going to vote? I don't know. I don't think I'll have time today. Millions of eligible voters in America never make it to the polls or even register to vote. 
When you don't vote, you're letting other people make decisions for you and pick the things your taxes will pay for. Voting is more than a civic duty. It gives you a voice about the priorities and the future of your community and our nation. Voting gives you a seat at the table. Share your stories on Instagram with hashtag heroin. You don't like watered down issues? Let us serve you the hard stuff. So come on, let's get back to Pastor C, MBZ, and the Chief. All right. All right, and we are back. The Me Too movement appears to be here to stay. This is a movement that has scored its first major victory with the sentencing of Bill Cosby and the delay of the Supreme Court nomination process. Thinbad, Chief, Mr. Hazabula, what is next? Who is next? How do we get more victims to come forward? And how can we, how, how does this verdict of Bill Cosby affect those like Harvey Weinstein and the president that we have like when if if obviously we can put away somebody like Bill Cosby when will it catch up to the rest of these people who are major figures whether if it's in politics or in entertainment how do we get more victims to come forward in numbers enough to make a difference and make these people go down And, you know, one of the things I want to add, sorry, guys, I came a little late, but, you know, everybody's questioning this process because these women are coming forth and saying, oh, this happened in college, this happened this, this happened that. Let's not forget Bill Cosby's doing three to ten years based on stories that happened decades ago. So is there strength in numbers or... Is is are these facts just going to have to be so concrete and backed up that there there'll be no choice but to convict these people? Where where do you see the future of this going? Uh, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's already went quite far. I think the impact is real. Um, you know, and you're you're seeing it across the board. It might not be in every instance, but certainly a difference has already been made. And I think the trajectory. Um, there's a positive one for, for victims at this point. I, I I'll agree. also, you know, say here right on the show, I, I personally don't think that uh, judge Kavanaugh is going to be confirmed. Wow. Okay. That that's, that's quite a prediction. That is. And, and, and why do you say that? I just don't, I cannot for the life of me see 51 individuals voting to confirm this man. Um, I can see 40. 45, but I can't see a majority in the United States Senate, regardless of what the party lines are. I'm doing it. Part of it's strategic as well. I think for individuals that vote him down at this point, uh, regardless of their party, they can always fall back on the principle of morality and say that, you know, he was not the morally uh, conscious choice for this. And really, to be a Supreme Court justice, you should ethically be beyond, be beyond reproach. Uh, and he's simply not. But I, I just don't see it. I don't think he's going to be confirmed. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, honestly, I've been wrong I hope before many times. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you really I hope you're right. I hope you're right too because, you know, a lot of people didn't think that Bill Cosby would go down the way he did only because, you know, regardless of color or whatever, 
he has this reputation and has this history and has this this huge legacy that he left in Hollywood and he's old, an older gentleman but obviously as we as we can tell you know hopefully that doesn't mean anything across the board because that didn't mean anything for Cosby. So hopefully that doesn't mean anything for Kavanaugh and that doesn't mean anything for the rest of the accused in this movement. So, you know, I really do hope that people continue to take these allegations seriously if it means keeping a person that's, you know, everybody everybody that's been considered for positions in this administration have been for simpler words a little sketch (laughs) so if we can keep if we can keep this guy from getting in there based on these victims coming forward i hope they do come forth in numbers and i hope people don't find ways to justify this and excuse this behavior because as i said last week the only thing worse than a guy who hasn't been caught doing this stuff is a guy who hasn't been caught doing it for all these years because I doubt if you've been going from you know early adulthood high school into college doing this and you've never gotten caught your character doesn't change especially when you've never had to face consequences for it so I really hope that people don't look at it as oh he he did this in the past you know these people don't don't have anything but memories but you know that really should reflect someone's character. So, you know, I really hope, I really hope that we can have some integrity in the person that we elect for this super important position, especially when one of the main reasons why people are worried about him Before this even came out, people were worried about his stance on women's rights and issues. People were really, I mean, feminists were shaken in their boots when they found out that he was the person that was going for nomination because of his stance on things like abortion and women's rights. So, you know, I hope, I really, really do hope that whatever has been done in the dark comes to the light in this case and in all the cases. And and I, I think, think would you say thin bad? Uh, yeah, I think it will. Uh, I'm gonna go on the, on the same limb. I'm thinking you may not be uh, confirmed either. I mean, you know, no one thought that Roy Moore was going to lose in Alabama, and you're going to have a Democrat as a senator in Alabama. Um, and and the president was backing him, and other folks were backing him as well. But it it, it happened. Uh, he got beat, and maybe lightning can strike twice. Well, that's true. And, and you know, I, I'm hoping that uh, Attorney Hasabula it has some foresight because, you know, th- this to me is not a Republican or a Democratic thing. It's it's the ethical thing. You know, I, right. I, I get that, you know, Democrats, independents, Republicans, they all have their ideologies and they all have their agendas. That's I, politics. I, uh, I I totally agree, by the way, just to, to put that out there. I don't think this is really a partisan issue. I don't think it will be a partisan issue. I hope it's not a partisan issue, but we'll see how it ultimately ends up turning out um, when the verdict is ultimately reached. Exactly. And, and that's going to be critical. Well, guys and lady. Uh, we've covered some critical issues this evening and we only scratched the surface. And as you see, the Me Too movement is is moving. It's having some influence. And it's it's also it's a shame that it took this to get people to at least be willing to come forward uh, with their with their their accounts. Now, certainly we I don't think any of us advocate people just coming forward with things just out of spite to see if I can railroad your career. That's, that's, that's creepy. And, and there's no, there should be no tolerance for that. But when we look at the folks that have been the subject of allegations, Bill O'Reilly, Charlie Sheen, Matt Lauer, president Trump, and of course um, the music world's personal favorite R Kelly with all of his, assorted issues which are just so bizarre that's another five-hour show um but each one of these gentlemen and they're more that's just the that's just the ones i can think of have had allegations brought against them for some type of sexual misconduct and 
each allegation, and that's this is just in my humble opinion, um, must be investigated because sexual harassment and assault is it's a menace. And everyone deserves who has an allegation brought forth.